Hello and thank you for joining me for the next Odor episode of The Eternal Law. On the last Odor episode we saw Odor forces storming Echizen, the stronghold of Ikoiki, and capturing it. At the same time, Nobunaga's army used clever strategy to destroy the Hattori main force for almost no losses, and as a result, went on to take their home province of Iga. Then, with new ninja clans under our control, the Oda clan started using these ninjas to defeat enemy agents left, right and center. But then a huge Tsutsui army began to attack the newly acquired province of Iga. Nobunaga leads an army behind them to attack their stronghold before they can make their assault. The Igoiki are rushing into the mountains, the vile Hattori bow to our will, and the Shogun still has not made his move. Perhaps he is paralyzed with fear. He surely knows that no other clan would dare oppose us, and that any action on his part to win their favor will simply bring his downfall by a different blade. Our coffers are full, our armies hold their heads high, and the Oda banner flies within sight of the Shogunal Palace. Ah yes, I can taste victory already. So we're continuing right on from the last Oda episode where Nobunaga is currently besieging the Tsutsui Fortress, the plan being to capture it and force the army back here to disband the massive Tsutsui army, which is currently about equal in strength to Nobunaga's, so it's really not preferable to have to fight with them because we will lose a lot of troops. Now we capture the stronghold with ease because we have such numerical superiority. We lost a lot of our ninjas in the process. It seems Nobunaga used the ninjas in some way to aid the capture of the castle, and the Tsutsui army indeed disbands. Good news, we don't have enough money to repair the damage to the castle that the Oda forces apparently did while capturing it, but we've still got the province, so that's good. The province features um, some advanced monastery buildings, which basically allow us to build warrior monks, and warrior monks of superior quality to other provinces because of its religious background. So we now have lots of new recruitment options. I need to research a few arts before I can actually use all of the different types of warrior monks available. However, this should be something interesting to use in the future. So back up to the north, uh, we saw last time that Kyunori came up to take over the garrison of Echizen from Takayama Muniyuri. This will allow Muniyuri to advance up and start investigating uh, possibilities of taking the next Iko Iki province of Kaga. I move him up and just about managed to cross the border, but he runs out of movement points, so now we have to move into the next turn, and during the turn transition, Ikoiki sent ships to blockade the ports at Echizen. I had been using the ports to do a little bit of trading, but a huge Ikoiki fleet blockades it. Very inconvenient. We get some clan destroyed messages, including the Imagawa, our former vassal turned into an enemy last episode, as the Tokugawa invaded them, are gone, and it is indeed the Tokugawa who have captured their province of Suruga. So it's goodbye Imagawa, and at least our ally is growing a little stronger. Hopefully he'll be able to hold out against any possible assaults coming from the east. Up in Echizen I'm now able to build the Buddhist monastery. This will counter some of the unrest that was charted there, saying that there's unrest due to religious differences. Takayama's army moves further into Kaga and comes into visual range of the enemy stronghold. The enemy appears to have a large standing army there as well as its garrison. So I didn't want to risk Takayama assaulting immediately, I'd rather wait until I can get Kiyonori to aid him in the assault. However, I also spotted up there an Iko Iki monk. Now because Echizen is mainly an Iki province, if that monk comes down he'll be able to incite Iki rebellions all over the province with ease, so it was very important for me to take him out. And for that reason I move up the Oda ninja Tsunetane in order to do battle with him. It was the same animation as we saw um, in the last Oda episode a couple of times, so I decided not to show it, but yes, the enemy monk was killed, and as a result, our ninja levels up, because he's got enough experience from performing missions. So now I have to choose, uh, for him, various skill levels up. I decided I was going to make this guy into mainly an assassination-based ninja, so I picked some skills that improved his ability to assassinate enemies and his ability to escape in the event that assassinations fail. So since we've moved on to the next turn, I can now afford to repair the castle uh, down here that we took from the Sutsui. I also have a spare ninja here. I decided to use him to investigate what the Shogunal forces are up to. We can see two huge Shogunal armies, one in Kyoto and one stationed outside. 
and an Ashikaga Shogunate monk. I decided I would assassinate him as well to make sure he doesn't do any shenanigans with the newly acquired o Oda provinces. So uh, let's watch this new animation to see how our ninjas are going to deal with him. It turned out only the infiltration section was new, so I cut out the kill section. It was the usual ninja jumps from a tree action, and it was successful, so the enemy monk has been killed. We are really taking out enemy monks left, right, and center. So here's one of the shogunal armies. It seems to consist very heavily of Yadi Samurai, as does the other one. They basically have Yadi Samurai, Katana Samurai, and some light cavalry. Very limited force, but very large and powerful still, so difficult to deal with. Back up in Echizen, I'm moving forces out from the castle to support Takayama's ambush position uh, with a mind to having more forces near the border so I can stage an easier assault on Kaga once the opportunity arises. As we move into the next turn, we get a message saying that down in Owari, all of the tradespeople have been inspired by the presence of Nobuhide for some reason. Interesting, the result is that any buildings we make from now on will have half construction time, I think, as long as we tell them to start constructing it within the next year. So this was quite interesting. I decided to exploit this bonus by upgrading the fortress at um, Owari uh, to the next level. So usually that's the process which takes a very long time. So now with this bonus I can do it relatively quickly. Still expensive, but it's still going to make Owari much more defensible should any crisis occur and Owari be invaded. Now I decided to investigate the options for having Sunutane assassinate some of the Iko Iki generals defending Kaga. He goes up to the castle and must now infiltrate to take out an enemy general named Matsunaga. Let's see how he does. The assassination was successful, so General Matsunaga is dead. This means that Kaga province is now slightly weaker than it would have been, so it's a good time for me to start planning my assault. I'm going to be using both Muriyuri and Kiyonori to stage this assault by combining the strength of their armies. With regards to your question, I have no doubt they will come out to meet you. Their men are eager to fight and appear to know very little of your strength. A great number of them are samurai favoring the bow, but I suspect the rest of their force will be too desperate to advance to allow them to make good use of them. Further, I should tell you I have good information that the Eco force here is the last army. The rest of their territory is unguarded. You will be able to take it as easily as I took General Matsunaga's life. I begin the attack by moving Munayuri's force up towards Kaga, but not actually attacking the castle. This is so that I can move more forces up to support him before he actually goes in and starts challenging them to battle. Back in Echizen, I had to arrange a force the Kiyonori to bring up because I couldn't bring everyone because the province was so unruly if I took all of the forces out, they would just rebel. So I brought what men I could, and now Takayama is fully supported. This gives him the opportunity to commence sieging the castle. Now my plan is not to assault, but to continue the siege in the hope that the Iki will simply attack me and try and sally out, because at this stage that is the best thing for them to do. So if they're intelligent, they'll try and beat me away before the siege gets too bad. Back down in the south, I was wondering what to do with Nobunaga's army, because this province is very peaceful. The army doesn't need to be here uh, to keep it suppressed to the Oda cause. But then there was also nothing else I could really do with his army in the local area. So I decided to move it north and hide it in these dense forests in order to make sure the enemy don't really know where my forces are and perhaps prompt an enemy in waiting to appear. Meanwhile, I'm moving my ninja up 
away from Kyoto and towards the Tango Tamba region to see what sort of enemy forces were around. The clan here is the Hatono clan. They were kind of hostile towards me, but they never made a move before, so I wasn't too worried about them. They have a relatively large army, perhaps something Nobunaga could deal with if they get a little bit uppity. Anyway, it's now time to end the turn, and as I did, the Takeda decided that they wanted to declare war on us, the Oda. Both the Tokugawa and the Hattori will be joining me in this war as my vassals. We will have war. You will soon be trampled into the dust. So the war with the Takeda, which I've been fearing for the entire Oda campaign, has finally begun. So it's time to test those defences I set up at South Shinano all those turns ago. But first, the Iko Iki reinforced their army and indeed decide to try and sally out and push Takeyama's army away before the siege can continue. It's time for a pitched field battle. Both sides are about equal in strength, so it's going to be pure tactics that decides the victor. However, we do have a numerical advantage, so we can certainly pull a superior formation to them at the very least. Let's head into the battle and see what happens. As the battle opened, the Oda army took formation on a small set of hills, partially covered by forests on the west side of the map here, and you can see from the beginning I'm reforming in reaction to the enemy's moves, because the Iko Iki army, rather than advancing in an orderly manner or waiting for its reinforcements, decided to charge from the very beginning. This meant I had to rethink my strategy of linking up with my own reinforcements, and create a formation that would be able to hold off the enemy for a bit of time, to allow my reinforcements to catch up and then envelop their force. And here are said reinforcements divided into two groups, both led by members of the Takagawa family, one of which is Takagawa Kiyonori, our great general, coming in on the south side of our formation. So the formation itself is something familiar to what you've seen in other Eternal Law episodes, with spears positioned in front of the heavier katana infantry and in front of them skirmishing bow forces, which is going to be quite important in this battle because the enemies um, bow detachments are very large, they have a large number of bow samurai leading their force. They also have a very small amount of cavalry, some of which was trying to raid around our north flank. You can see there's a set of cliffs defending our north flank, so it's a fairly safe position, but they're trying to get over them anyway. But before we can look at that, the main battle is actually already starting. The enemy's bow samurai set up and start skirmishing with my uh, my middle line actually, they're trying to take out the spear wall rather than take out my archers. However, the enemy doesn't really utilize their bow advantage, they decide to charge their infantry body forwards immediately. So I decide to position my bow forces behind my second line of infantry in order to provide supporting fire, whilst the front lines prepare to receive the enemy charge, all the while being bombarded with arrows. In some places the spear wall lost about a third of its troops before the enemy even arrived because the enemy's arrow bombardment was so heavy. If only they'd kept it going for longer, they would have been in with a much better chance. So here the enemy's heavy infantry is beginning to engage the spear wall. The spear wall isn't as thick as I would have liked it to have been. However, the enemy charge is a little bit broken up by the fact they had to come through forests. And they're actually not able to break through the wall. And once the spear wall starts to hold, they can hold almost indefinitely if you're lucky. So basically now the enemy front line is going to be locked in position here which is very useful for us. You can see I'm deploying my back line of Katana Samurai into the spear wall to start taking out the guys who are trying to edge their way through. Up on the hill I have a whole bunch of archers positioned to cover the advance of Kiyonori's force. This force is enveloping the south flank of the enemy army. The enemy did start to pull off forces to try and stop them. Mostly they redirected their bow fire towards Kiyonori's men. You can see his men are being cut down whilst I was busy commanding elsewhere on the battlefield. Eventually I realised what was going on and ordered a full charge to close in with those archers and engage them before they can do any more damage. The enemy have just a few melee infantry units back here, so Kinori's forces are going to have an easy time. Some of Kinori's cavalry comes in and starts harassing the enemy archers, however they're going to be driven away by some enemy spears. Over on the north flank, the enemy has a heavy infantry presence trying to push in against the, the flank guards right on the edge of my army. However, they're having a hard time because the spear wall is very thick here and it's holding well. And you can see I also have some katanas coming in to start slicing around their flanks. Back up on that mountain I mentioned, there are loads of Oda forces still hanging around because they're fighting with all of the enemy's cavalry, which one by one kept coming in regiment by regiment to attack the rear of the army, so I had to have loads of men back there to stop them. 
but it was around this point the enemy cavalry broke and I was able to bring five of those flank guarding units down to envelop the enemy's north flank. You can see their south flank is already beginning to break. Kinori's forces are charging forwards. Some of the enemy units have already routed. Now the enemy center is beginning to be enveloped from behind by these Naginata Ashigaru who were the flank guards on the south side. So now the battle is really beginning to go in my favor. The enemy reinforcements are still quite far away, so my hope is that I can destroy the entire enemy force before they show up. Takayama is charging forward to start inspiring some of the action going on behind the enemy lines. Some of the spear walls are pressing forward and reforming to try and get around the groups of enemies. Here you can see one of the enemy's units of Katana Samurai engaging with my own Katana Samurai. I believe mine are slightly superior because they are more experienced because Takayama's army has seen a lot of action in the past and you can see they're slicing through the enemy's Katana Samurai here as a result. Over on the north flank there aren't that many enemies left you can see they're being enveloped from behind by that flanking force I mentioned coming down from the mountains and now they start to break. The enemy has a very weird formation, loads of bows on their north side but they're all beginning to lose morale and here the enemy center has been completely crushed by Kiyunori's gradual advance around the back. So now pretty much all we have to do is mop up the remaining forces on the north face of the enemy's formation. Most of them were Ashigaru units, a few bow samurai, nothing that would stand up for long as my men gradually move in surrounding them and pushing right into them. Here it's Yari Ashigaru doing the work. A glorious victory will soon be yours. So those enemy Ashigaru break and all the enemy have left now are their reinforcement units. They have three units of Katana Samurai rushing over this hill uh, right here towards the battle. However these men basically start coming over the hill. They look down and they see the Oda army advancing towards them uh, jubilant with victory and they just turn around. They refuse to try and uh, waste their lives engaging this massive remaining Oda force and they just run for it. They're gone. And so with this, some of the Iko Iki are slaughtered as they retreat, but mainly we have won a glorious victory because a lot of these men will not go back to the castle which we intend to attack. When you win in Sally battles, most of the troops that come out will just scatter into the countryside. So once the battle is over, the castle should be very easy to take. It's a lovely decisive victory for the Oda forces and Takayama, teaming up with Kinori very successfully. So now it's time to head back to the strategy map and see whether we can take the castle right away and otherwise see how the Iko Iki are going to react to this new development. No, brother, you should be proud of your choice. Leading swords uphill towards cavalry is a bold move indeed, and perhaps unsound, but your bravery moved your regiments of spear to rush up and stop wave after wave of their horses from crushing down into General Takayama's rear. Without you, the Iko Iki wouldn't be half as scared of us as they are now. Come, you shall dine with Munayuri and I tonight as equal partner in our victory. I'll see you get a fine pick of the rooms once Kanazawa Castle is ours. So with the Iko Iki routed now we can look at the battle results, we can see that Takayama's force took about 25% casualties and the Iko Iki army was almost completely eradicated. This means that we're going to be able to take the castle during this end turn sequence rather than in the next turn because the enemy didn't have enough men left for us to bother continuing the siege. So the castle is ours, that is Kaga province taken. Enough brave men have died. It is time to discuss an end to the fighting. So perhaps reasonably, the Iko Iki decide to sue for peace, realizing that they are now on the verge of destruction to the Oda clan, and I am willing to spare them, I guess, under the condition that they become a vassal with me and will agree to trade with the Oda people. I'm checking here um, the diplomatic relations of the Iko Iki to see what exactly the baggage I'll be taking on uh, will be in bringing them into my vassal ship. I decided that in the end it was acceptable. There was no kind of harsh political consequences to having these rebels come under the Oda wing. So I decided to bring them met, into the clan. And I'm sure my lord will approve. I accept your counter proposal. This will give me time to gradually undermine their eco teachings using my Buddhist monks and eventually hopefully bring all of the Iki lands under Oda control. Now at the end of the Next turn sequence we are offered a new general so I decided to accept him We have a new general in our army we'll meet him a bit later on. We also saw that the Tokugawa had concealed troops hidden on the border of Awari. That was a little bit suspicious and I wasn't really sure why. 
So we're going to have to watch the Tokugawa. Here are the Iko Iki lands that are now um, revealed to us as a result of the battleship deal. You can see the Iko Iki have almost no troops. Of interest is that they have a border with Hida province controlled by the Takeda, our new enemy. So it was a good thing that I negotiated peace with them because this means I'm going to be able to sneakily attack the Takeda through the Iko Iki lands rather than having to waste time finishing off the Iko Iki. And here is the new Oda general. His name is Takayama Arimori, perhaps related to Takayama Muriori, our current general. He's very loyal, even though he's only just joined us, so this is good news. My vague plan for him was to have him go and lead the defense of South Shinano, since South Shinano is going to be uh, surely the flashpoint in the war with the Takeda that's coming up. So I sent him on his own to maximize the speed with which he'll get there. The garrison at South Shinano is already quite large, but it consists mainly of archers. So really, if the enemy get past the outer walls, they will be in trouble. So I wanted to try and develop South Shinano a bit more, uh, just in case the enemy decided to attack. You can see I'm recruiting a few more troops. I also decided to start upgrading their stoneworks. If I can get them upgraded, which will take quite a long time, I'll be able to build a giant castle there to be useful. Now back up in Kaga, which we just captured, I can see there's a giant Iko Iki Temple complex built here. And that is a bad thing, so we're going to burn down the Iko Iki Temple complex. This will stop Iko teachings spreading both in this area and in all the provinces surrounding this province. Uh, which will pretty much allow me to use my monks to eradicate all Iki teachings in the uh, Echizen and Kaga areas. So that will pretty much be the end of their rebellion, I believe, once I can get that done. I'm moving Kiyonori's force up a little bit. Basically, I was intending to move on from this province fairly quickly to go and have a look at Hida. But before I can do that, I need to know exactly what's going to be waiting for me there. So I'm sending my ninja Sunutane to go and scout out the area. He sees that there are no Takeda armies between me and the castle at Hida. He moves on a little bit and sees that the Takeda army is in fact in North Shinano and that what can we, we can see of it is fairly large. Takeda Shingen is leading an army himself. It consists of many samurai and lots of cavalry as you might expect from a Takeda army. He also has a huge group of reinforcements with loads more cavalry and heavy katana and yari samurai. So the Takeda definitely have a dangerous force in the area which of course is mainly a threat to South Shinano at this stage. Now because things started to be heating up in the east around this point, I thought I might move Nobunaga back from his recent conquests back to Umi to put him in a better position to come and support Mino if everything goes wrong. Enlightenment is bliss, but to share this with the people is a greater gift. Monks inspire armies and generals and can inspire a repressed Buddhist population to rebel. So there you go, I've recruited my first Buddhist monk from the new temple I built here in Echizen. And you can see here the religious balance is starting to shift on this tooltip. It's still being held back by the fact that giant Iko Iki temple exists up in Kaga. So once I destroy that, I believe the Iki teachings will start to just disappear as the Buddhist monks and the general Buddhist atmosphere that uh, our clan is creating by supporting Buddhism is going to just flush it out completely over time, of course. So, we're moving into the next turn. Uh, Atakada Metsuke tried to arrest my ninja, but fortunately failed. But then this happens. An absolutely massive Takada force walks down towards South Shinano. There was at least two full armies there, along with a few reinforcement groups following up. And I'm sure they have more men on the way. So, it looks like South Shinano is in trouble and it's too isolated to reinforce. Things could get hairy for the Oda forces stationed there. It is finally upon us. Cousin Munayuri used to speak of the Takata with great disdain and fear. Now the reports say their armies clog the Shinano road and their horses churn up the fields all down the valley. Most of the people have escaped from harm so far, but who knows what that Shingen will try to take these lands for himself. I'm not sure what I'll do when I arrive. There's no way that the troops in the province will hold, even with my help. And yet, I'm on a bound to try, it seems. I can only hope my loyal cousin can reach us from the north and deliver us all from death. In response, the Oda offensive against the Takuda must begin now. The first step is for Sunutane, our ninja, to assassinate that Meske who very cheekily tried to arrest him. So he's going in and is going to take him out.
Success, the enemy Metsuke has been defeated. Bit of revenge there. And perhaps next turn, Sunotani can go on to do a little bit more shenanigans behind the attack of the lines. So for now, we're going to have to rely on pure military force to distract the Takeda. First, I need to go into diplomatic relations with the Ikoiki because I need to negotiate the military access I'm so going to need to bring forces like down into the Takeda lands. From Kaga, respect have informed end up our getting a deal where we both have indefinite military access to their to each other's lands because that's all they really wanted to do. It's kind of annoying because letting the Ikoiki access my lands is only going to lead to them trying to spread their rebellion. However, I think they're so weak that at this stage I could have afford to make this deal, and I think it is going to be worth it because, as you can see, I can take Hida Province right now in a single turn. Takayama's army moves out to come and capture the province. This is going to be a real blow to the Takeda. They did not expect this when they declared war on the Yoda. I'm going to alter to resolve the assault because it's going to be quite easy. And it should be a victory with relatively few casualties. Easy. We lost just a hundred men or so. And Takayama leveled up to level four. This is excellent news. We're going to occupy the province peacefully. Now it says here we have the Shogun's ire. Uh, because our clan is becoming so big and powerful, the Shogun is beginning to plot against us to try and ally the other clans to gang up on us to make sure we don't get too powerful. And this is going to only get worse and worse as we become more strong as a clan. And eventually you'll see the Shogun is going to take drastic actions to try and stop us. But we don't need to worry about that for now. We just need to worry about the Takata clan and not losing our current position. This province has lots of superior wood resources, so we can use the wood from Hida province to build superior naval forces, which is quite useful. Down in South Shinano, General Takayama, I guess I should give him a different name, General <laughs> Arimori, reaches South Shinano and is able to take command of the garrison. You can see I've also moved a few troops outside the castle to act as reinforcements in the event of a siege there. Back over to the west, I started moving Nobunaga's force towards Mino because I thought things might very readily go wrong over in South Shinano and Mino will be the next place we need to defend because if we lose Mino, then we're in big trouble because if Iwari falls after Mino, the Oda clan is just going to dissolve. Back up in Hida, it was time to level up Takayawa Muriyuri. I decided to give him a retainer called the Horuric Ashigaru which gives you plus one morale to all Ashigaru units in his army. You can see he has quite a few Ashigaru units under his command, so that's a pretty useful bonus. Now I need to move on to decide his personal skills. I gave him two levels of field attacker and two levels of infantry commander. So he's going to be a very offensive infantry centric general. Which really is what the Oda clan is all about at this stage in the war. So how will the war with the to go? Well you have to find out in the next Oda episode. That's all for this episode, but do join me next time where we'll be seeing the Takada turn the tables on the Anika Koji and reap the rewards of going to war with the Hojo. That's next time on the Eternal Law.